Hi, my name is Dan, and this is my video about Samuel Colt's estate in Hartford, Connecticut. I'll talk about the Colt Mansion, called Armsmere, which survives today, and some of the changes that have been made to it. I'll also talk about the lost landscape of the Colt property, which included statuary, fountains, an ornamental pond, and over 2,000 feet of greenhouses. Samuel Colt was the firearms manufacturer who created the Colt Revolver. By the time of his death in 1862, he'd become one of the wealthiest men in the country. His pioneering manufacturing innovations and flair for publicity made him an important and fascinating figure in the history of American industry. The Colt Armory, with its iconic onion dome, is a Hartford landmark. When the original armory was destroyed by a fire in 1864, Colt's widow, Elizabeth Jarvis Colt, who'd inherited a controlling interest in the company, rebuilt it to the same design. This is a section from the Bird's Eye View of Hartford of 1877. It shows the armory as it existed at that time. The armory complex is just one part of Coltsville, a historic district which has recently also become a national historical park. Coltsville stretches westward from the Connecticut River to Wethersfield Avenue. It includes the surviving section of the old Colt factory complex, now converted to other purposes, and the former worker housing nearby. Not far away were the Swiss-style cottages of what was known as Potsdam Village, which Colt built for workers he hired from Europe for his willow ware factory. Colt had erected a dike to protect Coltsville from flooding from the Connecticut River, and he'd planted willow trees to stabilize the earthworks there. The willows were used to produce furniture and other products. Nine of these cottages survive today. Northwest of the factory district is the Church of the Good Shepherd, an Episcopal church built in 1869 by Elizabeth Colt as a memorial to her late husband and four children they had lost. It was designed by Edward Tuckerman Potter, who was also the architect of the Mark Twain House in Hartford. Just west of the church were the baseball grounds, where the Hartford Dark Blues played as charter members of the National League in 1876. Twenty years later, Mrs. Colt persuaded the architect Potter to come out of retirement to design the Church of the Good Shepherd's Parish House, erected as a memorial to her son, Caldwell Hart Colt. It was built in the area of the old baseball grounds in 1896. Further west were the park-like grounds of the Colt's family estate called Armsmere, meaning Meadow of Arms. When Mrs. Colt died in 1905, she left 106 acres of this land to the city of Hartford to become Colt Park. The original Colt landscaping and greenhouses have since been replaced with lawns and athletic fields. On the western edge of the property, along Wethersfield Avenue, are two Colt residences that still exist today. Both are in the Italianate style, and are thought to have been designed by the local Hartford architect Octavius Jordan. The smaller of the two was erected in 1856 for Sam Colt's brother James. The other house was Armsmere itself, home of Samuel and Elizabeth Colt. It has the architecture of a grand Italianate villa, and was actually added to and expanded over a number of years. The west side of the house, pictured here facing Wethersfield Avenue, has a very similar appearance today to how it looked when it was finally completed around 1857. There is a port cochere with a covered arch entrance to the estate grounds on the left, which looks much the same as it did when the Colts lived here. It is still guarded by two marble dogs, 
They are replicas of classical sculptures, Roman copies of Greek originals, of two Molossian hounds that are in the Uffizi Museum in Florence. A hundred and sixty years ago, if you had passed through the gates, you would have encountered a grassy knoll with an apple tree and a fountain depicting a boy with a swan that was a version of a famous work by the German sculptor Theodor Erdmann Kalida. Pictured on the right is another version of the same fountain. The view through the arch is quite different today. There are newer buildings in the rear, and instead of the fountain there is a different sculpture, one that used to stand in a different part of the estate. It's a bronze version of a sculpture by another German artist, August Kiss. It depicts a mounted Amazon attacked by a panther. This piece was reproduced in various sizes, like the one pictured on the right. There is also a much larger version outside the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Next to the gateway is a setback section that contained the dining room, and next to that is a section that once had a bay window. On the right, at what was then the building's southwest corner, is a tower that once featured an elaborately decorated porch that wrapped around the corner here. This illustration, from the 1870s, is a view northward along the west facade. The base of the tower section is on the right. Adjacent to that, the south side of the building was dominated by an exotic dome on the southeast corner that brings to mind the dome on the Colt Armory. There was also a glass-enclosed conservatory with a dome that was inspired by the Crystal Palace in London. The conservatory was added to the house in 1861 to 1862, just before Samuel Colt's death. Here is a stereo view of the south side in the 1860s. This was the most often depicted side of the residence in popular prints and photographs of the time. Between the large Italianate tower on the left and the exotic dome on the right stretched the Grand Conservatory. Here is another view showing how the conservatory extended to the south. Inside, beneath the glass dome, was a fountain in which a bronze of the Greek god Triton blew a triple water jet into the air. Goldfish swam in the pool below. The conservatory had a marble floor, and in the center of the room was a large pyramid of flowers, continually renewed with blooms from the Colt's greenhouses. Mrs. Colt continued to live in the house until her own death in 1905. She was the daughter of Reverend William Jarvis, an Episcopal minister, and by the terms of her will, the mansion was converted into a home for Episcopal women, with apartments inside intended for widows and orphans of clergymen and what were described as, quote, impoverished but refined and educated gentlewomen, unquote. As part of this conversion, the conservatory and glass domes were removed and a new two-story brick wing on the south side of the building was completed in 1911. Armsmere continues to function as senior housing for women today. Let's return to the south side of the house as it appeared in the 1860s. And here is the south side of the house today. The house survives, but what was the rest of the Colt estate like back in the 19th century when its landscaping was nationally famous? This is a view of the southeastern side of the mansion in 1876. At that time, Kiss's Amazon sculpture was located on a mound just next to the house. This is a view of the same area today with the 1911 edition. This is a view of the east side of the house, which faces towards Coltsville and the Connecticut River beyond. East of the house, on the edge of the lawn, in front of a background of foliage, 
was a sculpture of the goddess Diana with a fawn, shown here in a 1921 photograph. It depicts the moment when Diana was surprised by the hunter Acteon, who she then transformed into a deer. Nearby, on the Colt estate, was a fenced-in deer park. The deer park was east of the house. North of that, extending east from Wethersfield Avenue, was a line of connected greenhouses. Many of them were hothouses. Spaced out along this row were several octagonal glass rooms with pyramidal roofs, one of which was at the end of the row along Wethersfield Avenue. These rooms had round windows with colored glass and were comfortably furnished with willow chairs no doubt produced in the nearby willowware factory. The green houses extended eastwards, eventually forming a large quadrangle. If all the greenhouse sections were stretched out in a straight line, they would have extended 2,364 feet. Inside, in addition to an innumerable variety of flowers, the colts grew cotton, rice, grapes, and many types of fruit, including pineapples. Between the greenhouse quadrangle and the mansion were two buildings that survive today, but have been much altered, the gardener's cottage and the carriage house. This photograph from 1920 shows the carriage house on the left with the wooden stable addition on the right. In front are 12 horses in a row. The wooden section on the right was replaced by a brick addition in the 1930s. Just south of the greenhouse quadrangle were a peach orchard and a swan and duck pond. This pond was called the Lower Lake, in contrast with the main lake next to the house. By the time of Mrs. Colt's death in 1905, the Lower Lake had already been filled in, and the greenhouse quadrangle had been much reduced. When the estate became Colt Park, the area next to the greenhouses became a school garden which continued for many years. This photograph from 1921 shows the gardener's cottage on the right, the carriage house, and the remnants of the greenhouses, including, on the left, one of the octagonal glass pavilions like the one I mentioned earlier. This photograph from 1918 shows children tending the school garden with the carriage house in the upper right-hand corner. Young children, mostly from the south end of the city, were given plots to grow vegetables. They had lessons in gardening, and they could take home what they grew. As the Hartford Current described it in an article on August 15, 1906, quote, The garden itself is an attractive spot, planned on the English sunken garden idea, below the level of the ground west of it and enclosed with a fence on a gradually receding bank on either side and at the west and north surrounded by the greenhouses of the estate and the cottage of the gardener, making as picturesque a setting for a school garden as can be found in the country." Unquote. Today the area I've just been describing still has the carriage house and gardener's cottage, but the greenhouses and school garden have been replaced by the park's pool and service buildings. These areas of the estate were being altered even before Mrs. Colt's death, but the striking landscape of the upper pond area, with its statuary and picturesque summer houses, survived until 1952, when it was replaced with a lawn. This section was frequently represented in publications, prints, stereographs, and postcards from the time of the Colts' residence through the early years of Colt Park. The bird's eye view of 1877 shows significant features. There was a smaller north section of the pond that featured two fountains. Between that and the rest of the pond was a rustic bridge, which led to a summer house that was a lattice-work pavilion. Further along the lake was another summer house 
known as Elizabeth's Bower, named for Mrs. Colt. This postcard shows the smaller section of the pond, with the rustic bridge on the right and the summer house pavilion in the distance. This next postcard depicts the two water nymph fountains. It also shows a later version of the rustic bridge. This replaced the original Colt Bridge, which had a naturalistic appearance. There were sculptures at either end of the bridge. On the west was a sculpture of a dog with a puppy. On the other side of the bridge was a statue of Hebe, goddess of youth, pouring out nectar for the gods. It was a copy of a sculpture by Antonio Canova. The view in this postcard is towards the southwest, with the bridge and the dog and pup in the foreground. Across the lake was a small promontory that featured a sculpture of a goat suckling a kid. This is a photograph of the lake, this time from the opposite side with a northwest view. There's the south side of Armsmere in the distance. On the left is the dog and pup and the earlier, wilder version of the bridge. On the other side of the bridge is the statue of Hebe, and beyond that is the latticework pavilion. Here's an 1860s stereograph of the same area viewed to the northeast, with the pavilion on the right. This was an interesting structure, pictured here in 1921 after it appears to have been raised up. This is another 1860s stereograph that features a view from the pavilion, looking across the lake towards another summer house called Elizabeth's Bower. This was also a picturesque latticework structure with a dome. Next to it was a copy of the Apollo Belvedere, a famous ancient Roman sculpture now at the Vatican Museum. This photograph was taken in Colt Park in 1921. This picture brings us back to the northern side of the lake with the rustic bridge, dog and pup, and fountains. Just to the north, beneath a grove of trees, was what was called the Grove of Graves, the resting places of Samuel Colt, who passed away in 1862, and his four young children. The graves were marked by simple slabs of marble and by a marble niche of a boy among flowers gazing at a butterfly, sculpted by Edward Sheffield Bartholomew. After the death of their only child to survive adulthood, Caldwell Hart Colt, in 1894, the family graves were moved to Cedar Hill Cemetery. In their place was erected the Samuel Colt Memorial Monument, which was commissioned by Elizabeth Colt in 1902. She passed away in 1905, and this memorial to her husband was dedicated eight months later, on April 26, 1906. For years it was adjacent to the picturesque lake, which was filled in and replaced by a lawn in 1952. The monument, designed by the sculptor John Massey Rind following the suggestions of Elizabeth Colt, features a large memorial statue. In front of it is another sculpture of Sam Colt, this time depicted when he was a boy sailor carving his invention of a revolver cylinder out of wood. On either side are bas-reliefs, one depicting his meeting with the Tsar of Russia, and the other shows him demonstrating his revolver to the British House of Commons. The monument continues to greet visitors today near the entrance to Colt Park. I'd like to end this video with a few more images of the old days of Armsmere Estate and Colt Park.
If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. Thanks.